Usually, the navigation display shows in the captain's and first officer's inboard display units. Navigation radio tuning panels are on the aft electronic panel. Each pilot sees data from the related VHF navigation radio on the navigation display. Navigation radio number one and navigation radio number two data can show on either the captain's or first officer's inboard display unit. ADF radio data shows on each navigation display. This is the centered VOR mode display. This mode shows VOR and ADF data. DME indications show for the frequency set in the related VHF navigation control panel. Bearing pointers show when the VOR ADF switch is in the VOR or ADF position. The off position removes the related pointer from the display. The bearing pointer source indicators show in the lower left and right corners. Move the number one VOR ADF switch to ADF. ADF pointers are cyan. VOR pointers are green. Number one VOR ADF pointers are thin. Number two VOR ADF pointers are thick. Push the center switch on the control panel to change the VOR display. This is the expanded VOR mode display. This display shows similar indications to the centered VOR mode display. This is the centered VOR mode. The track line shows track or drift angle. You set the heading bug with the MCP heading selector. Change the selected heading to 250. The heading bug moves to the new heading. Course selectors are also on the MCP. You set the course pointer with the related MCP course selector. In this lesson, you use the captain's displays. Change the selected course to 130. The course deviation indicator shows deviation from the tuned localizer or VOR course. The VOR centered mode also shows reference VOR frequency DME distance, and selected course. Now, let's look at the navigation display. You use the EFIS control panel mode selector to show the four navigation display modes. The approach mode is selected. It shows ILS approach data on an expanded compass rows. With the selector in the VOR position, the VOR mode shows. The VOR and approach modes are almost the same. You use the VOR mode to show the VOR data. The map and plan modes are discussed in a different lesson. Push the center switch. The center switch lets you change between full compass rows and expanded navigation displays. Here is the heading reference for all heading displays. The normal heading reference is magnetic. But at very high latitudes and certain areas near the magnetic poles, all compass references automatically change to true. 
Wind data shows when wind is greater than 5 knots. The reference for the wind arrow is the same as the compass reference. Currently, the reference is magnetic north. Track shows with a track line. The MCP heading selector moves the heading bug. Change the selected heading to 250. The heading bug does not park on the expanded mode navigation display. True airspeed shows above 100 knots. Ground speed shows here. This area shows which navigation radio supplies data to the display. You control the course pointer with the MCP course selector. The to from annunciation shows here. Center VOR mode also has a to from pointer. Expanded VOR mode does not have a to from pointer. Move the number one VOR ADF switch to the ADF1 position. The related ADF pointer shows when the ADF radio receives a signal and the VOR ADF switch is in the ADF position. You select a new frequency. Now change to the approach mode. The glide slope data shows in approach mode. Now let's check TCAS and weather. TCAS detected traffic and weather radar data are not available in center approach or center VOR modes. Change to the expanded mode. Next, push the weather radar map switch to show weather radar data. Range now shows. Range shows if weather radar or TCAS are on the display. The range selector controls the range. Change the range to 40 miles for a weather check. Now you can see a weather radar return. Next, push the traffic switch to show TCAS traffic. Traffic shows. TCAS and weather radar are discussed in different lessons. Now, let's tune the radios and see what occurs on the displays. Tune the number one navigation radio. First set the frequency, then transfer the frequency to the active window. Set the course. The course you select and course deviation show on the navigation display. Tune the number one ADF for the new clearance. Move the number one VOR ADF switch to ADF. ADF data now shows on the display. Failure flags show on the navigation display. Failure flags show if a DME system fails or if ADF, VOR, or ILS information is not valid. If heading information fails, Heading displays are removed. The map failure flag shows if the map display fails. The navigation display message EFIS mode navigation frequency disagree shows when the navigation display mode does not match the tuned frequency.